Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I want to talk to you quickly about A Half-Built Garden by Ruthanna Emrys. This is Emrys' latest novel. It came out in August of 2022 and I received an arc of it from NetGalley, so thank you to NetGalley and the publisher. I apologize for having this out rather late. <laughs> So A Half-Built Garden is, as far as I know, Emrys' first science fiction novel. She has written fantasy novels in the past that I have not read, but I was very curious about this because it is science fiction. It's a first contact story um, in the near future, and it's very heavily concerned with environmental and ecological impact and questions about that on the earth. And I enjoy all these things. I enjoy like climate science fiction and I really like first contact stories. So that is why I wanted to read this. Um, it is a near future science fiction novel about first contact with symbiotic alien species that arrive on earth and basically come to tell humans that they are on the verge of extinction or catastrophe that will destroy them and the planet because of the effects of humanity on earth. It's a pattern that these aliens have seen many times over, and this is the first time that they've arrived um, in time to actually warn and help a sentient species avoid their impending doom that they're doing to themselves. So these aliens, the ringers, basically come to tell humans, you should join us, leave your planet and mine the rest of the solar system for your resources, and you won't have this impact on a planet that could lead to your destruction. So they want humans to become another symbiotic species in their um, their big ring world, essentially. And the thing is that the first humans that the ringers contact are um, a married couple with a baby from a, what this was called, like the watershed networks. Um, basically, there have been some huge societal changes on Earth and there are like corporations, city-states, there are these uh, watershed networks with their, their, their dandelion networking technology that are kind of like crowdsourcing as government. Um, and the watershed networks, their entire community organization is around what's in their watershed and protecting the environment, considering every impact that their decisions might have on the environment as they're trying to heal the planet. So when the aliens contact humans, they encounter the very people who would say, well, we're not going to give up on our planet, we're not going to get rid of our home, and we're certainly not going to dismantle it for parts to build a ring world. <laughs> so the, the entire story, I think, is this discussion of how do you adapt for a future? What kind of radical change might you consider for your species in order to survive and thrive? And can you do that without sacrificing and cutting away what makes you essentially you without like destroying your home, a planet? Can very, very different species with incredibly different values still become one and and preserve what matters to them. Um, there's a lot of discussion of family and relationships, interspecies relationships. There's even kind of interspecies romance going on in this, which was an interesting detail. I really liked the questions and the issues that this book brought up about social issues, environmental concerns, the role that technology can play in furthering the negative trends we currently know about, but also in in helping, in helping um, society shift and helping us with environmental and ecological concerns. I thought this was really interesting. There was something about the way that technology was like used and described in everyday life and to tackle big problems in this, which for some reason really reminded me of the way technology is used in Emma Newman's Planetfall series. I kept thinking that there were similarities between this book and that series, even though they have very different tones. I'm not exactly sure how to put that into words, but um, yeah, I really enjoyed the details of this. I would say that if there's any weakness of this book that I 
felt while I was reading it. It was mainly that I didn't feel that close to the, the human characters in particular. I felt like what most of what I knew about the human characters came from their own descriptions of their cultures and their way of life when they're trying to explain it to the aliens. And I felt like this was kind of like second or third hand knowledge about them. And even though I was very much in the head of the main character throughout the entire book, this very narrow focus on what her experiences are, what her thoughts are. I just didn't come away from it really feeling close to the characters and that I felt their personalities. I don't think the characterization is poor in this book by any means. Actually, I think that some of the characters are very distinct. Maybe they just weren't the kind of people that I feel close to or something. <laughs> Either way, uh, that, that was interesting. I definitely came away from this feeling more about the themes and the topics of the book and, and the big questions people are, are dealing with rather than um, thinking about the individual characters. So overall, this was really interesting. Um, I was um, at Worldcon listening to a panel that Ruth Anna Embrus was uh, talking on about Hope Punk, and she definitely puts this book into the category of like hope punk and what she calls diaper punk. And I think this is a, actually a really good description of this book if you were into the kind of scrappy grassroots punk sort of thing, but absolutely smashed up with more hopeful science fiction and, uh, well, a lot of babies that do need to have their diapers changed. <laughs> Like I said before, I hadn't read anything else by Rothana Emrys when I picked this up, and I chose this because it's science fiction and I'm a bit more into that. But at this point, I think that given the strengths of this, the strengths of the writing and the characterization and the plot and everything, I would probably seek out her other fantasy novels to see if they are also something I might enjoy. I have heard good things about them in the past. So yeah, this was a really fun read. And I, like I said, I really enjoyed the questions that it brought up. I think this is one that could be a really great discussion book for people who are interested in the topics um, that, that it presents. So those are my thoughts on A Half-Built Garden by Ruthanna Emrys. Let me know if you have also read this and if you have any thoughts on it. Please leave me your comments down below. And thank you so much for watching this review. I'll be back to talk to you again soon about more books. Bye!